I start this poetry with a question in my mind. Have you ever heard a story of a woman being abused, assaulted or any crime? Sorry if you have and if you haven't, your ears are all mine. But this story serves a twist that awaits your time. So let's not wait anymore and start to rhyme. Day one it was when I was born a boy. It raised the level of my family's joy. At five, I was trapped within my sister's talks, talks surrounding love, sex, and cocks. At seven, she introduced me to vanity and made me go insane in my world of sanity. At ten, I was too tiny for an answer to trigger as to what was that dick doing on my figure. At twelve, they laughed, they teased, and endlessly bullied, said you're a woman and hence you will bleed. Two years later, at fourteen, I was termed as feminine, my walk, my talk, or merry shock were not as determined. At 15, I dared to shut my eyes and blossom some dreams, followed by tears that fell like roaring streams, streams that wiped off all my dreams. But still my face never lost that beam. It never lost that beam. If you've ever seen someone getting beaten up recklessly, then don't just stare. Someone's in pain and someone's going away. At 17, I chose to stay away from the burning rays, rays that gave birth to the football craze. If my choice in sport was a judgment poll, then the judges were nothing but a bunch of assholes. And one fine day, I tell myself, you know what, Loki? Enough of tears, cries, and hearts that break, because I tired, done, and that's all I could take. But then I saw how my past knocked at my door. I shot slammed with abuses, crowd, tring, tring, rang my phone more. <sighs> that was sympathy, hoping for more. All that day, they, the men, the ten on ten, oh yes, the gentlemen have said our mere words giving them sheer joy, right? But what they, the men, forget to get is that none of them make me wet. You call me a man squeezed into a woman, so shall I scream? Don't rape me, don't duct tape me. While in the open, you call me a faggot to loosen things many, but that morning when you grabbed my ass in school, suggested me to lust upon you for a single penny, what made you think I'd do that? Why did you force your lust with latches locked and hearts stoned? Why were you not man enough to choose your identity? I did. I chose my identity when I told you, I'm not what you think I am and you can't force me to be what you want me to be. So back off, I said. But then you saw threat as the only entity. How easily you'll threaten me and how easily you'll proclaim yourselves as men. Why not do it in light and only in the dark? Where's the man within you then? Lost? Shall I help you find it? <laughs> Don't worry, we won't be able to. Because darling, you never were a man. Only because you should know I don't recite this poetry because I want more shoulders to lay my head upon and trickle tears down my face. No, but the reason I recite this poetry is to tell you to be more human and more nice to people. And the worst was when I gathered the courage to tell my family of all I had seen and been. And I did. I did. But God slapped on with a question. Beta, tum wo to nahi ho na, kyunki wo na acha nahi hai. Trust me, that sentence broke my heart into pieces. I can never be turned back again, never. But then I realized that this was and is my fight, and I must not expect anyone to be by my side and tight. And why should they? They've got their own life issues, right? So it's time for you to shut up, for me to stand tall. It's time for you to take all your tears back, and I should take my tears back and not shed at all. Yes. You know, this feeling of being touched by an unknown and unlikable is not all a woman's issue anymore. It is a human issue, I feel. Whatever it is, at the least of all things, we shall be happy and smile it away. Let's be real and help the world be a better place. For it is a fact that real humans are endangered, I must say. Thank you.